Selamat pagi semuanya. Sorry, maybe most of it I will speak in English due to a lot of uh, actually foreigner here. But maybe we use a mix of language as well. Um, I have a 20 minutes and I think when we talk about US and China, it's always a hot topic and it is always exciting, right? So I just want to show you a couple of the facts. This is fascinating fact, I guess. So if you look at this, so how big China is. So now when it comes to digital and e-commerce, is China maybe ahead of US? For two reasons. Size does matter, 1.3 billion people compared to US like less than 400 million people. Second, basically about the, if you look at the, what you call it, the apps now. Normally in China, they just copy what US have. But recently, I think, most of the social media platform and the apps actually develop in China, which I think from infrastructure and cultural perspective, I think and I personally believe it is good to benchmark with China rather than to US for our cases. And the other fact, fascinating fact is about the online sales as well. In China, FMCG is so huge in terms of e-commerce compared to the other country. If you look at this, China is ahead of US. Maybe now in terms of the size of the e-commerce is a lot bigger than US now. The good things when I see this facts, why China can grow so fast, this is our observations. If in China, WeChat can be used for three, it's like WhatsApp, it's like Facebook, it's also like a payment. But for us, actually we use different platform. We use WhatsApp separately, we use Facebook separately, Instagram separately, and payment not to mention you have OVO, GoPay, and the other stuff. And WeChat actually link directly to the payment basically link directly to the banks. But in here, I think we sort of like need to transfer first. So I don't know, I think it will maybe come a, be a lot better. Sooner or later, I think we will get there. And the other interesting facts, basically, if you look at this, the online groceries in the world, 20% growth every year. And it will bring the value of 4 trillion US dollar in next year. So huge, these things. But when you look at this uh, fact, the other ones, what scare me basically the, what you call it, the purple ones. Take over the world, control your mind and feel emotions. So we just use thinking that AI will, will not take over humans. But I think sooner or later they try to have the emotional as well. So this is a challenge for humans, I think, as the overall for everybody. This is actually from the fascinating fact from the global perspective, especially from China. But you look at Indonesia, basically. The internet penetration about more than 100 million people. Then you have basically 71 that already use the smartphones. And the other one, basically, 84 million online transactions. This is this data maybe about two years ago. So this one, I believe, is growing very fast now. So this is Indonesia. But then when you look at this, this is this kind of thing is very interesting. Only 27 save money at the financial institutions. Only 9% use a debit card to make payment. Even when we sell the social commerce, I meet that person, I transfer that money on cash. So I think in Indonesia, very different perspective. That's why I think everybody from the online also come to offline, which I think commonly and makes sense. So huge people still not doing the transactions using the online payment as well. So this is, I think, a potential for us, certainly. The second one, if you look at this, in, from the employment perspective, 31.86, almost 32% is contributed by agriculture and farmers. This is Indonesia. Indonesia, very interesting. Financially, we are still developing from the employment perspective, still a lot in agriculture. Then when we look at two things, when we talk about digital, I cannot forget about e-commerce as well. So what is the barrier from, from us, especially from our category, which is related to food and beverage, particularly snack and confectionery? So the issue basically, if you look at this, there are two things I want to highlight. In China, infrastructure is very well. Even Jack Ma said, I will send the product to all over the world only within two days. 
But in Indonesia, I hope we are progressing very well. So infrastructure is still a big challenge. So second, if I buy FMCG product 30,000 or like $3, and you ask me to pay 10,000 for delivery, Indonesia is very tough. That's why I think the online sales grew when there is a deep discount. So I think, and every, I think most of the country as well, but this is the challenge. So infrastructure in terms of delivery and the cost of delivery will be a challenge. And second one, from the behavior perspective, do you buy online, you are happy when you get the product, right? Ta-da, it's actually the price actually. You buy the presents for yourself, which is very good. But then from behavior perspective, like sample, you take China, why FMCG can be so huge? Because when I buy coffee, one RMB, I can buy 100 pieces, which is time 2,000 become 200,000 rupiah, $20 Singapore. So I can pay the delivery cost, then makes sense. But in Indonesia, if I want to buy coffee like Torabika, I just go to Warung, pay 1,500. So the behavior of actually stocking up to buy a lot, bulk, I think wasn't still there yet. But I think this is the potential. That's why I think looking at the particular of our category is still a big challenge from infrastructure and delivery cost perspective, and at the same time from the consumer behavior itself. Then we look at our brands, basically. If you look at Bang Bang, the price is 1,500, very cheap. Do you think that people that want to have Bang Bang or Te Puchuk actually, oh, okay, let me buy online first. Very impulse, so that's our challenge. Second, from the perspective on digital campaigns, I think I like uh, Pak Rohit presentation, a lot of learning, and we did a lot of eye tracking and neuro as well. But the issue with the FMCG products, when we do multiple research in multiple country, this is the sad things. What do you remember? What brand do you remember that advertised digitally? They just said Grab, Traveloka, Tokopedia, maybe Gojek. Then I said, what is the FMCG product? Very hard. Now, I, I want you basically to ask yourself, what is the ad that you remember from food and beverages perspective? One. Second, even when they recall this, this is actually our industry challenge. What message do they get? Even Grab, even Gojek, I think when we ask the consumers, they don't know. Or maybe some promotions, free delivery. So I think to deliver a good ad, I'm not saying they are bad. I think we have still a lot to learn from Grab and Gojek and things like that. But the challenge basically, especially for our category, consumer did not get the message. This is our challenge as an industry. So really, actually, I'm thinking how to really help as an organization, as an industry, to help. Otherwise, very tough for a lack of marketers, to be honest. And the other ones, I mentioned it earlier, so I'm not really worried TV is declining, rating is declining, or other media take over like digital. But the issue, you know what, TV declining, but digital from our perspective doesn't really help. Most of the cases we can say, okay, you cannot make a silo, just digital work or not. You need to use it as a combination, which is nice. But what I am looking for, basically, how the digital actually can really help the brand in reaching the consumers, which is, that's, I think, still a big challenge for our category. That's why I think this forum is very good, where we can learn together how to deliver the message effectively to consumers. Then, unfortunately, TV, from our perspective, is still far effective in delivering the message. How about digital? Yes, awareness possible. But from our category, which is not too relevant in digital, it's very, very hard. So really, actually, our, our task, actually, our task as a marketer and as an organization and as an industry, how to make digital work for our category like us, which is food and beverages. This is a real challenge that I think everybody in here, I think, let's work together. Otherwise, the life for marketer very tough. Now I will give you an example. 15 second unskippable ad. Then I will ask you, this is in control situation, I ask you to see this, and I will ask some questions. So can you count how many F, yeah? F. Just very simple, count F from these statements below. So I've give you 15 second, count F from the finish up to the years. I give you 15 second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, done. Then I ask you, how many F? Three, how many F? Six, three, four, five. This is the beauty of marketing. Now you know actually financial people here is very good. So marketing life is not so easy. <laughs> you see, control situations, but you come up with different number, actually six. You forget off, off, off. There are three off that actually you probably not seeing the F. <laughs> so that's the things I think, yeah. This is control, unskippable, still you don't get it. <laughs> okay, hopefully you are with me now. <laughs> so uh, the next basically what I'm thinking really, this is uh, my hypothesis, I think. This is not even hard part, I think. This is from what our experience and what is the issue? Why digital so hard from FMCG? So we have myth in my view. One basically mental state is difference. When I'm watching TV, I'm ready to be entertained. But for digitals, anything that I don't want is disturbance. And my, actually my son, which is five years old, tried to find where is the skip button. So that is always the trouble. Now, Parohit said how to make it very effective in the first second, which I think completely agree. So that's what we need to do. So mental state is difference. Seconds, basically, the youth with all the problem of their behavior and attitude completely different. Can you imagine when the ad comes, he's enjoyed the ad, and suddenly the WhatsApp from the girlfriend said, let's us break up. So then the tension completely gone. With all the kegalauannya ya, Bapak dan Ibu ya. So that is youth, I think, very hard. As a human, very hard to control them. But they are very important life for our business and industry. The other one, basically, from the time. On TV, the prime time is determined by the program. And sometimes I can determine from the TV station, let's make prime time 7 to 10, right? But for digital, the prime time is very hard. It's determined by each individual, one. Second, can be changed according to what is happening that day. That is the problem, the digital, in digital. And the other one, hyperactivity. So, this is driven by I can jumping from one app to the other app. On TV, I can move maybe like 11 TV stations, but these apps, completely different. So, it's determined not only by the youth character, but also the apps that develop by all of the startups. So, the, the, the world actually very, very different. That is our challenge. So, how we going to approach it. So we did a lot of study as well, like neuro and eye tracking. So we believe basically we are human. We need to make human as a human. That's why I think we need to have a purpose in life. So with the purpose, then the youth can be engaged. Everybody can be engaged when we do anything in digital. Scientific approach will be become big and bigger. AI, IoT, Machine learning, they, because they keep learning, that's why they name it machine learning. So I think that things I think will grow. But how we humanize the data, really, as a human, use that on top of just technology to understand the behavior of and the attitude of the consumer that will actually completely to the new level compared to the current behavior. And their behavior and attitude will not be the same. So long the, actually the earth keep rotating, the behavior and the attitude will keep changing. So how we have a good purpose as a brand, as a marketer, that's what we believe. Then use the centric approach human nicely and use that approach to understand the new behavior and attitude, whether when you put the ad or whatever it is, and expect it, it will keep changing. It's not constant because the new level. Last year, maybe 1940 something, when the great depreciation comes, it can last maybe two to five years. But the good things basically today is when we say depress depressions, maybe like maybe a couple of months, the world changing very fast. So that's the good side of it. The depressions may not be too long. So <laughs> that's at least what I believe. The other one, I think, a couple of the last slides. Our focus now, what I believe is everybody, agency and the client focus on, try to find a common measurement, rating. They want, they expect to find equivalent of GRP. But the client thinking like me, thinking on how to deliver the message. Now we are completely to different things. 
Then let me tell you and share you something that the ad, the first ad appears on TV is of 1st July 1941, which is already 78 years, three months and two days ago. So they already seven, almost eight decades. Do we have a common rating for built-in and sponsorship? Even the agency struggling, right? So now how you want to make the rating for digital? which in my belief, digital just to put skip unskippable may not be there. Because like in China, what the trend is, they purely talking about the content. Digital advertising alone will not be birth. It's very, very tough. This is our challenge. So I think I really encourage us as a marketing and as an agency and the digital agency and expert here, let's work together. You also thinking how to make this digital work especially for our category, so that we can deliver the message nicely to the consumers. Then we talk about the rating at the end. But don't solely focus, which is all the world now couldn't find it, the rating. That's the good thing. Hopefully Indonesia can find a commonly rating that you score digital very nicely. So, but the challenge basically really encourage everybody and including us to really work hands on hands to make our any things that we want to convey to the consumer can be delivered, uh, what you call it, nicely. So from what I learned, basically there are five things, at least from my era perspective, that the brand or the company that need to have the purpose, one. Second, anything that already have a purpose must have an insightful campaign so that actually we can get cut through, be it in traditional media or in digital, the message can be get cut through. The other one, I think I always remember myth. They are different, mental is different, the character is different, the time is different, and they're very, very active. So I think how we solve this issue, which I believe we need to use our, uh, we need to use all our thinking that we are still humans. So how we use the, all the, the progress in digital can be used actually to make our message nicely to the consumer, delivered nicely to the consumer. And O2O, cannot separate, this is online, this is offline. If you keep focusing online, somebody said to me, someday you will be off, they said. So <laughs> what they are saying basically, this is at the end, is the channel. So you need to focus both, cannot be just either one. And though FMCG is still very small, I think we need to keep learning because that's the world we'll progress to. And the other ones, I think what we learn is the startup mindsets. Test and learn and be fast. So this is, I think, a challenge from our industry and FMCG. So my last slide, basically, this is I, what keep me awake all the time at night, basically. I believe marketing is the biggest battle in human history because when I am a leader, doesn't guarantee I can be the leader all the time. If I'm not the leader, it is not the end of the world because I can, can be number one as well. But the brand may not need me anymore as a marketing function only in the future. This is my worry. If we cannot solve how to deliver FMCG to the consumer in digital world, then if that happened, I really believe, what we believe perception is more than reality. But if I cannot deliver my message, how do I create the perception? Then soon the consumer will say reality is bigger than perception. Why Hermes is actually more expensive than Chanel? Maybe I can search everything in the next few couple of months maybe, so I can track a little bit. So the perception is very tough. Plus, if I cannot deliver my message nicely to the consumer, how do I create the perceptions? If I cannot create the perception as a marketer, then I can imagine the world without marketers. So that's the end of my presentation. Hopefully we can work together to deliver the message nicely to the consumer. Thank you very much.